for troubleshooting the E5 error that I had got previously. So we're heating setting one, and I've gone through the entire installation, and it appears that it's probably firing too hard, which is heating up this uh, sensor here. So to uh, check that pressure for firing, it's at 2.33 inches of water for low. So there's a, a little screw in here. You open it one turn, and then you have to hook up the manometer. A normal furnace would have uh, a port for this plug to fit into. But this one doesn't have that, so I had to shove a line in a line here. And uh, so I feel like this number is too high. If you look at the uh, instructions in the nameplate here, it's supposed to be 1.6 and 3.5 inches of water. So I'm just waiting for this to kick into mode 2. It says H2. I'm thinking that it's going to be too high because it seems like the furnace can run happily on uh, stage 1 without any issue. And I've opened all of my ducts in the entire house, pulled any cap off, I pulled out the filter, and uh, I've been able to extend the runtime, but it still trips out on E5. And I think if you trip out on five, six times, the furnace will lock out, and you'll have an E6. So it looks like the manual with the uh, Rev B furnaces isn't as detailed perhaps as the Rev A furnaces that didn't have a digital readout. They just had an LED that would blink. So I was reading the uh, troubleshooting guide for it and it's uh, a lot better because it doesn't lump all of the uh, sensors in together. Because there's like two rollout here to tell if the flame is coming out of the uh, burner, I believe is what they're trying to tell us. There's another one here for saying if the heat exchanger is overheating. I believe that's the one that's opening. And then there's one on either side of the fan that's important for this configuration. It'll tell if there's too much hot air going through the intake, which again could be uh, some reverse airflow or something along those lines. So it's just going to take a few minutes for us to get into stage two. We should run it for a while, like 10 minutes, in each stage to get everything warm and up to temp. Because that's ultimately what you're trying to set things for, is your uh, steady state. So I guess I'll turn the camera back on once we uh, get into stage two. All right, so we just kicked into stage two here. And uh, we're looking at the number, so 4.27. So I'm gonna write that down on my little block of wood so I can remember what it was. And then again, so I got it to drop it down to 3.5. So it seems like uh, when this furnace came out of the factory, it was uh, set kind of high for output. And uh, now we've got to turn it down a little bit. So things are warm and you can see it's like uh, 4.27 so let's see if I can get these in here together so the high turn it out 24 just a little plastic screw in here
write some instructions here. So I could have go I could have gone ahead and figured out how many BTU the thing was firing at. But realistically, I just want it to run right. I don't know that I care perhaps. So I'm hoping now that what'll happen is that I can run this thing like continuously. Because I was running into issues uh, where the heat pump wasn't keeping up and it would uh, quickly cycle to uh, stage two box heat and then 25 minutes later the furnace would shut down on E5 and uh, then you kind of lose control over it. With the EcoB, when you set it to aux, it'll stick, it'll work only with aux, but you can't set it to compressor only. So I was like four hours away from home and kind of keeping a, an eye on things with uh, the app on my laptop. And you, so you, instead of having an auto, I'd set it to heat and it would quickly go through the heat pump modes and go into a uh, box and then trip out. So there's no good way of uh, forcing it to hold its own on uh, compressor. You could adjust the uh, how much temperature droop you permit. That might be one approach that you could take. Because like I think right now, after like 0.6 degrees or something, it'll uh, trip out, or not trip out, it'll move on to the aux heat. But it might take a bit longer than that. You may need to let your temperature drop a little bit before the heat pump really starts working correctly. But uh, so anyway, it's uh, been down to minus 20. And I, I changed my uh, compressor lockout temperature to minus 20 because the, the above B20 is able to do that. Whereas some of the other models, like the plus and the entry model one, can only run down to minus 15 Celsius. But it really didn't give it any difference because the house temperature was dropping quickly enough that the BTUs coming out of the uh, compressor stage two just weren't enough to stop the temperature from dropping. So we just switched over to aux. So I've said that a couple different ways now. I'm trying to make my point, hopefully it's gotten through. But anyway, so now if you're tripping your uh, furnace out on uh, E5 or E6, I would, Make sure, one, you've got all the airflow you can get, including taking out the filter. So me taking out the filter gave me about five minutes. So I went from this filter, I tried a new filter, and then I've got no filter right now. And I opened up all the ducts that were pinched off to get as much airflow as possible because right here, it's basically that dude there is telling the furnace that the heat exchanger is getting too hot which is true, but it appears to be that it's because of overfiring. And uh, so right now, I've got my, uh, sorry, I just gotta start up the phone here. I'm trying to call for like 25 degrees here, I'm like 21. So I'm gonna see if I can do it or not, because I need to leave town. And I gotta, I gotta make sure that this thing will perform for as long as necessary in stage two heat without tripping out. It's like, uh, it's one thing to be four hours away. You can watch things on your phone and know if you gotta come home. I've got some baseboards that can set the minimum temperature to like 15 degrees Celsius to protect the house. But uh, ultimately, I want the furnace to work correctly. Now, if this was an electric furnace, like as the backup, that would be kind of interesting in that you would continue to get your compressor heat helping instead of, uh, in this case, it will not run the compressor and the fossil unit together, as I mentioned previously. But um, if you had the electric heat coils, they would be after the A coil here be over there somewhere. They could all be just different, right? But you would be getting the output of the compressor 
at whatever efficiency you're getting at cold temperatures plus uh, the one for one energy of the resistive heat going in. So you'd be getting two sources of heat still versus one. So that there's a bit of a benefit in there, but if your home is dropping temperature rapidly, like my home, after about minus 10 Celsius, it seems like the, the four ton heat pump isn't able to keep up. If I put in a five ton BMAC coil, it might have, it would have helped, but I would have had to go to a, a bigger furnace and my ductwork wouldn't have supported it. So it's uh, just the pros and cons of the situation. But anyway, I'm gonna have to sit here for the next half an hour to an hour and make sure that we can get uh, full heat out of this thing. So we got the uh, sensor set to 3.5 here. I think it might have been 3.6 previously. I kind of somehow muddled the two numbers together between 1.6 and 3.5. So we're firing away. I did have a problem where the I could hear the fan, the ductor fan loading up with condensate and it shut down. So I'm not sure what that was about. It may just be it's just trying to clear itself out after the problems it's had running the last day. I don't hear any water or anything tinkling around in it this time. I did have to drain the port here to get the water out of it, but it seems happier now. So this has kind of become a bit more of an issue than I'd expected, but I guess it's a, a good learning lesson on why you should set up your furnace correctly the first time, so you don't have to uh, go back and uh, adjust things. So I still, I'm trying to get it to call down to an H1 now, and set the uh, 1.6. Uh, we'll continue on from there. Got the furnace down to uh, H1 again. Set it to uh, 1.6, which was the goal. That was like a turn and a half or two turns to get down from 2.3. It was uh, quite a bit. But uh, anyway, so we've got that. So now I'm going to shut the furnace down. It seems like if you short cycle this furnace, it'll start tripping the E2 code in here with the, and you can hear the uh, condensate kind of in the blower fan, and it takes like three or four attempts before it fires up again. So that's not ideal. So doing the testing kind of puts it in a funny situation, I think, is the case anyway. So this is, uh, might go as a separate part of the uh, IDS video, because like normally a homeowner is going to receive the system and it's running correctly, it's not the expectation that you can change anything. So uh, I think that's what is going to happen. So like I said, I'll put this in a, a separate video and uh, we'll talk about maybe analyzing the uh, data from the Ecobee afterwards. But basically what will happen is the furnace will run an H2 for a length of time if it's firing too hard and it'll trip out on the furnace side but the thermostat's continuing to call for heat and the indoor temperature keeps falling and it'll fall for I don't know half an hour to an hour before the furnace successfully restarts and it'll climb up again and hopefully you reach set point at that point but you may not so you end up with you continually losing temperature inside of the home uh, you'll see that it runs like a purge on the uh, fan after a failed run and you'll see a short trace in the uh, Ecobee on the website information just for like, the fan, it'll run the blower fan and I think the uh, maybe the inductor fan as well, I'm not too sure. But uh, that's sort of what you'll sort of see as a signature when it does a successful a failure and then it's trying to restart again that short run. But the temperature will continue to drop and it's not trying to run the compressor side of things either. So you're going to continually lose heat in the home. 
So I think, uh, yeah, we'll wrap up this video here unless uh, something else comes up. So thank you for watching. Hopefully, if something else shows up, we'll, we'll continue the video.